let us continue playing King of Dragon Pass. When we last left off, we had compl successfully completed our first hero quest, and we have a lot more cattle now. So we are well on the way back. Uh, vision to the far northwest. Okay, we need to make a trip up there. Not to worry then. Um, so yeah, basically we have over 700 cattle again. Our goods uh, are okay. We'll probably put two into war, two into trade, one into mysteries, crops, herds. We're spending a lot of clan magic this year, actually. Um, keep hovering over hunting for no reason. Let's put a point into diplomacy, just in case. Proceed. As Lander and Nomalding Trader strides into Clan Hall. We hear you found some odd stones and would like to trade for them. We'd even be willing to take the whole lot of your hands so that you can concentrate on your other crafts instead of having to learn new ones. As Islandar speaks, Hendrik yawns elaborately and folds his arms. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. They weren't completely pleased with this proposal, but they agreed to it. They rearranged their goods and filled two large chests full of stones. They sent for cattle which soon arrived. We concluded the bargain. We have a lot of cows! This is absolutely awesome! I think our magic went down though. No, we did spend 10, uh, whatever. I've got more than 7 which I'd normally like to keep. And heck, that's gonna help us out there. So... Uh, Hjort managed to encourage us to get along with our neighbours. I think we are going to send an emissary. Generosity, the more gifts we give out, the more we are like him, the more the other clans look to us for leadership. That's the Grey Foxes. Well, we're not going to deal with the Grey Foxes just yet. We probably do need... Probably do need some more weapon feints. So I'm going to go up to 20. Actually, do we want that now? Part of the reason I'm a bit fitty about what we do at the moment is because I still need to get the farmers uh, on my side again. Um... Just see what they say about this. People are very healthy. Cast in all the crop land and 69 herds. We have enough for now. These wanderers won't be bringing any crying babies into the clan. Uh, we have plenty of crafters. Lots of goods and crafters produce them. Isn't the answer obvious? Okay, we're going to max out our crafter production then. Best bet there is to just do that. Uh, Who's tracing seems okay. More fields or pastures and make it harder for our enemies to speak, speak up on us. Mm, fair point. And we'll need to graze some 29 hides of land to be tended by that. We can handle another three hides of land. We'll try to stockpile more food. Well, we're not going to explore until next season because we don't really want to do that. Um, we can really do at the moment is try and learn some more mysteries. So let us go and sacrifice to Ordalia. That actually is Ordalia the best one here. I suppose so because actually the other two mysteries are quite um, useful to us. Sacrifice eight. Confused visions. And we're being raided by the horse spawn. Kill as many as possible. Skirmish. Go. We changed missile fire with them, but never close. For our healing magics, with their healing magics and our, uh, so their healing magics, our auxiliaries kept two warriors alive from, and vanished one of the wounded. We lost two fight. No, yeah, that was that was all right. We didn't lose anything for that. Right. So car blessing to milk blessing. I think we want to switch back to milk blessing at the moment because we actually have enough cows. So we don't need to worry about um, about the numbers increasing it much more. Oh, Oryx. We need to set. We need to get some of Oryx's mis mysteries done. I'm gonna stick sacrificing eight goods. Yay! Sense chaos. Now, if only we could build more temples. We need more population, and we need more um, goods in order to maintain these temples. So it, it's a mix of those two. But we are pretty much at our limit at the moment. What we really need is um, making of a storm tribe. Could be useful with us. We're in fire season though, and we need to explore to the northwest. So, 
let's go and explore. Three and ten, we're going to slowly explore into the northwest. Go. Farmers are working hard, but there are too few of them to care for the crops and the herds. Many refugees or travellers petition to membership in our clan. We should welcome them as cars or cutters. Rendella, the daughter of Fane Hal Hebard, has gone missing. Hebard is sure she has been kidnapped by a family clan from Clan Wildcat. He recently told you to reject their son Dangmag as suitor for Rendella. Privately, the girl's mother, An Analessa, confides that she thinks Rendella willingly ran away to meet Dangmag. Wildcat clan is near to a feud of us. If we allow the marriage, they will soften towards us, but our clans will see us as flaunting, tra flaunting tradition. Signing on marriage is the duty of the ring, not the individual. If she gets kidnapped, the Wildcats flaunt our rights. If she went willingly, both Rendella and the Wildcats offend against us. The Wildcat clan is a hair's breadth from away from a feud of us. Our forces are superior to theirs. Halibut is too protective of his daughter. He would have proposed a marriage proposal from King Hjort himself. Yeah. Their forces are superior to ours. Oh, this is a tricky one here. This is going to hurt, but... How much compensation do you demand? Uh, no more or less than the president's call for. They refused us. Darn you wildcats! Okay. So we're making enemies at a fast rate of knots at the very least. Let's sacrifice another eight goods to Orlanth. We let the Thunderstone reach on. Which improves the effectiveness of our skirmishes. How are we doing for, um, we can probably afford to give some gifts, actually. Let's gift the farmers 16 goods. Our expedition to the northern land of Tarsh returned. They once more met with the Orlanthi of Tarsh. Rolling Tarsh, Salinag and several others took the opportunity to make several small trades. They seemed favourable at the time, but when Salinag inspected the goods on the return trip, it turned out that our explorers had been out-bargained by the worldly, worldly Tashites. No emissary still the plan since I'm tired. Told us to were older. Count, count you and offer to perform a ritual to honor their goddess. The ritual will make your cows healthier and more fertile. Will they do so to honor her older? It's also clear they want, to, they want you to offer something in exchange for their ritual services. End our plan for... Uh, give them five cows. Plan magic is strong. We can afford to make a share in it. Cows are anxious to accept. Yeah, let's offer them... We'll be a bit more generous than that since we can for once. Ten cows. They thanked us for the gifts. They gathered up our cows and walked around them seven times, whisking them with a holy tail. After forming a lowing dance, they completed the ritual. This clip pronounced the ritual complete. They departed to the cheers and good wishes of the cows. Children of the clan are once again growing beards. We saw this before, but you don't need to panic. It's a good idea to find out who did this. Divination! It is the Grey Foxes. We are launching a raid of... Well, oh, actually, which season is this? We'll wait. It's dark season. The farmers are resolved. The clan mood is worried, though. Well, either way, we have lots of food. And I think that means we need to do some more trading. So, let's go and... Go on a... So, we could go on a mission. No, no this is what I meant. Right, we can sell horses to buy some trade goods. So we shall sell horses to buy goods. Large caravan, we're going to send a fourth weapon vein along because every time we do that recently it seems to have failed. Uh, they pay us tribute of an SD. Town hearts we're feuding with. Let's go to the Squat Oaks. Large avalanche cut off the only route to the Squat Oak clan. We'll have to wait till warm weather before attempting the trade again. Alright, well that was a um, that was a non-event. I suppose we can send it out again. 
12, sell horses, buy goods. Let's go for the apples. Oh, darn it. Born Gold, a small slit holder, accuses Jorator, his neighbour from the Venesti clan, of moving the boundary stones between her pastures. Jorator denies this and complains that Born Gold is trying to use the clan chief to steal from him. As Short once said, sometimes it's better to just give them the cow. Uh, I mean, might be willing to fight against tough odds, but not for the sake of a few misplaced boundary stones. Much personal animosity in this dispute. Each party is more interested in being proved right than in winning the clear title to the land. I think I'd say for certain that there's something about. tells me that Horngold's claim is just. Perhaps there is another way for the two men to compete. Um. That's fairly sensible, but I think actually we're just gonna. Jorinor agreed to respect the boundaries as drawn by Borngold. Hurrah! So potentially we got a bit more land there. We're nearly up to 800 cattle. This is getting quite a bit silly now. So we're into storm season. Let's go for a surprise raid, I think. Just up our patrols a bit. We're going to raid the Grey Foxes. We're going to send all of our auxiliaries, we're going to send 14 weapon fanes, and we're going to send 140 footmen. We're going to call on the Black Rocks for support. The Black Rocks sent 36 warriors. We're spotted by the Great Fox patrols, and our 14 weapon fanes are meeting 14 weapon fanes. Sacrifice to Orland. I want to seize their land, ideally, but oh well. Plunder. Grey Foxes attacked while we were still sacrificing. The fighting was fierce. Our magic blew away theirs. We drove the Grey Foxes from the battlefield and were able to plunder their Chula. We took our slender was 21 cows and 10 horses. We took 26 cows with loot. Excellent. Children woke yesterday morning with hair on their pillows on their faces. Those dreadful beards that appeared so suddenly are gone. At least they were out after most of the children. There are four boys whose hair stayed on their faces and the healers fi uh, healer finally come down. Four... Very well behaved all day. Finally, they made to fill out too. Oh, children laughing and playing again. There was enough pasture of land for all our livestock. Two cows, one horse, and four sheep died of malnutrition. Oh, we need more crop, lad. That's actually rather worrying now. Let's go and just take... That shouldn't do. Luckily we still have some clear, enough cleared land that we should be able to feed everyone. Uh, so we need more farmers, actually. One of our cars has died in unusual circumstances. And Taurus saw a sight in the mist that frightened him to death. Uh, so are we got, have we got random ghosty things around? Quite possibly. 26 babies were born, 26 children initiated as adults. We have 27 more cattle, 10 more horses, 5 fewer sheep, and plenty of food. Proceed. Our crafters will be plagued with misfortune this year. Okay. Crops. I'm going to put a point or two into. That's a good harvest actually next year, so we need to make sure that's good. I'm going to put two points into war and two points into trade. People are still talking about a trip back to Tarsh. They were very interested in the news we brought back, and no doubt would be pleased if we took another trip. Pentares died of old age. So long as we remember his poems, he will still be with us. Okay, so we want another um, trip over to Tarsh um, next this year, which is fine. We can do that. Crafters are played the misfortune, but we have lots of goods, so we don't need to worry too much about that. Um. And Gore's things. We have most of Lank and my stuff. Let's sacrifice eight goods for um, some more mysteries. We learn details of Lank and my finds of the truth. Short of cars for some time. If we don't have enough workers for the fields or herds, if we don't recruit more, we might have to reduce the amount of land under our cultivation or salt more animals. They've been talking about capturing frolls to get extra laborers, but our ancestors never kept frolls, and doing so would hurt our clan magic. Ooh! A milk-white calf has been born into, your into the herd of one of your calves, or Orendal. 
A white calf is considered a creature of great good omen. When Orolda's favourite calf wandered the land of the dead, it turned white. When Tai Koratek returned it, Orland's tribe rejoiced. The calf is a gift for the gods. The gods will reward us if we repay their generosity by sacrificing it to them. Orindal wishes to seem generous, but he does not want to give up the calf. We can argue it is Orindal's duty to give up the calf, provided the whole clan would benefit. We sacrifice the calf to Revelda, our herds will benefit. We sacrifice it to Orlap, our wisdom will be forfeited. This is no ordinary calf. Whoever owns it gains great fortune. The gods are mighty, and we are hungry. If we decide to keep the calf, they will not begrudge us. <laughs> this is going to be a little tricky, this one. Fortified, not um, forfeited. Sacrifice to, to um, Orlanth. We said that Orlanth was well pleased by our gift and would give us good fortune in the weeks to come. Excellent. Right, still in sea season. Uh, let's think about this. What we need to do is try and pick up some more farmers. Offering land and sheep. We're going to. Actually, we're going to go offer land and cattle the way we're going at the moment. So nearby clans or any clan, recruit. Right, fire season. Let's go and explore Tarsh again. Now it is important, we should really be exploring a lot more of the map than we have been doing. Um, yeah, there we go. I'm going to send 4 and 12. And we're going to explore Tarsh. Slowly, send. I heard that promise made to this talking fox. While well, we cleared land after swearing we wouldn't, but nothing bad seems to have happened as a result. Farmers can only wonder if we made promises to some trickster in disguise, or if the fox was just bluffing. We were able to attract 69 new cars to the clan, they brought with them 91 children. The grey foxes have decided to raid us, and this is not going to go well here. We're going to evade. We're going to sack, use two magic just to be sure. Go. We pulled back before the grey foxes were ready. When the the charge reached us, they were tired. There was a bit of fighting, our magic deafened and dazed them. We drove the grey foxes off, and their survivors left to up plundering our chula. We captured four horses. Excellent. <laughs> Women from the Alumni clan come to urge you to help prosecute a feud against the Venesti. Venesti have done some grievous injury, blaming us for sending dragon meats against another clan. You have always been our friends. Now we ask you to aid us in smiting these villains who disgrace all of Dragon Pass with their wrongful actions. Unless they dislike us, we should use this chance to better their rela our relations with them. Hatred between the two clans is very strong. It's very hard to make peace between them. But if we succeed, the rewards will be great. We are Lundi are our friends. We're not obligated to help them. We want the guards to aid a few. Sacrifice to Urox, who likes to see a bad wind blow. Or Hamak, who is the guard of death. We should not incur the wrath of the proud and distinguished warriors of the Mercy clan. Sacrifice to the gods! You're becoming a bit more vengeful in your very, 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 very old age, Mark of Law. In fact, I've never had anybody live into their 70s in this game. You are somehow... Uh, I don't know. Sacrifice to my gods! Either way, um... The Alumni are our friends. We have lots of goods available to us, actually, but I want to save those for a, um... Let's sacrifice to the gods. We will sacrifice two... Hamukt. And we will sacrifice 15 cattle. God talker said signs were good. Hamukt favoured our gift, Uvi Yolandi. The woman said their warriors would use the favour of Hamukt to smash the impious rodents of Clan Vanessi. We lost magic for that, I think, though. So that was not necessarily the best of ideas. However, it's happened now. Now I want to build a stone wall because we actually got enough goods to consider doing this. But for now though, and I think we can leave that alone. We sacrifice some... Let's go and sacrifice... Eight goods. To Isaris, we learned the spare grain ritual. We now have all of his rituals up. And that's extra food via trade, which is sometimes worth it. The thing is, though, we have a lot of food ourselves, and we are 
really not going to need to get rid of that. We need to sell some food. Alright, mission. Don't know what we need to sell food for, but... Eh... Uh, Drennings aren't going to need it. Hatred of the Pharaoh, they owe us a favour. We're going to sell food and see if we can't pick up a treasure out of that. Might not work. Selling foods for goods, though, is a plan. Ooh. Explorers from your clan find the body of a dragon nude warrior lying in a stream bed just inside the boundaries of Petula. Some of them heard it's possible to make magical armor from the hide of a dragon nude, however, they don't want to touch or move the body without first seeking advice from the ring. We're having trouble with some of our neighbors. We could improve relations by giving the body to one of them. I would. We should demand 15 cows for it. Dragon Nude Armour is very difficult to make, but it makes the wearer very powerful. Remember what happened in the Dragon Kill War? Dragon Nudes make all the other strange foreigners look normal by comparison. Let's trade it to another clan. Feuding with them. Um, really anyone seem to want it. Let's give it, trade it to the squad, so clan for 15 cows. The most they offer you for the treasure is 12. We'll accept that. We have 16,440 food. 1,640 food. We are... Oh, that's partially... That's got to be because of all of the weird... Um, all the new people. We're now up to 930 population and... We still can't build more... Temple space. We have lots of goods. We've got to have... Max out our craft is just a... 32 cows worth of goods. They have more fortifications than we do. The harvest was bountiful this year. Indeed it was. We got far too much food, I think. Well, let's go and build a stone wall. Ooh. Enderos, a young, energetic farmer on the road to prosperity, asks the clan council for help. He claims that his sed is haunted. Objects move around. Wailing noises come from nowhere. Enderos's wife and child see have seen an apparition. People are afraid their steads will be haunted too. We must know more about the situation. Every time we try and fail, the people will grow more fearful. When in doubt, send for shamans. Horvator Farsi. So he once conducted a case against the spirit, so there may be precedence for outlawing the ghost. First, we must learn why it is here. Our magic is strong, and divination will point to the correct course of action. Spirits are all around us, and some can be troublesome, selfish as real people. Enderos must have forgotten the name of one of his ancestors. Let's make sport of his foolishness. Conduct a divination. The spirit of our ancestors said this ghost was sent by the Tannerhearts to vex us as part of their feud against us. Hmm. Launch a legal claim against ghosts. We would not respond to Kelbrust's legal arguments. Same for shamans, they want 15 cows of goods. Sure. We accepted the arrangement and they danced around um, Enderos' stead, banged on a drum and ate a brew of moss and lichens. Their eyes rolled back in their heads and they spoke to the ghost. The bangs of the ghost stopped and the shaman said they had banished it. Excellent. We probably need some more weapon veins, I'm thinking here, so let's go and employ a few more. We're being raided by trolls. Luckily our patrol spotted them, 19 weapon veins met them, as well as 150 of the fjord. Sacrifice to Orlant, we're going to kill as many as possible, charge. Both sides are eager to engage. There's a moment of silence as the two forces collect themselves for the next attack. And Wilms has a choice to whether to fight like a hero or look after his own health. He's an Aroxy warrior! <laughs> he goes to where the fighting is worst. We ran to where the, there were most trolls. We all knew he was a good fighter, but everyone was astonished by the way he single-handedly destroys the trolls' chances for victory. It was a short, nasty battle. Our magic helped carry the day. We drove the trolls from the battlefield, striking them down as they fled. And though our healing, for our healing magics and auxiliaries kept two warriors from dying and managed one of the wounded. Right. Call out, and now we are going to raid the darn Grey Foxes again. They will learn. But we can raid with a lot more people than normal this time. I'm gonna send 
everyone in, I think, just about. Here to ask the Olandi for help. Send 26 warriors. Seize their land. Charge. We rush the Grey Fox formation while they're still sacrificing their gods. Before the Grey Foxes can realise their danger, Bannerwolf dashes among them and strikes down their chief god talker, a Mukti whose spells were bolstering the courage of the clansmen. Bannerwolf escapes from the Grey Fox warriors, seeking revenge for their comrade. Then rest for a moment beside our own god talkers. How should Baron Wolf fight the rest of the battle? Fight bravely and press the enemies hard. Move like a whirlwind, driving the Grey Foxes back across the battlefield. There was a bit of fighting, our magic smote them mightily. Although they resisted this bitterly, we were able to hold part of the Grey Fox Tula. A share of the plunder was 27 cows and 5 horses. We took 16 cows worth of loot. We took 6 Grey Fox Auxiliaries captive. Our auxiliaries kept 4 warriors from dying and bandaged 4 of the wounded. That was a complete demolition! Ransom them. They ransomed the prisoners back to the Grey Fox's 30 cows worth of goods. Oh, and the Gerundings want to play, do they? Okay, they have 10 horsemen and 26 swordsmen. Drive them off, evade for now. Gerundings were content to harass us with missile fire as we withdrew. Darn, we lost our weapon thing. Married Mordrin the Stout, a prosperous farmer of the Venesti clan, and his sons, Kalmar and Han Harnkol, arrived to Tula. I understand you have the clay cow. I am prepared to offer 40 cows worth of goods for it. We can assure Mordrin's friendship by making him a gift. It's difficult to put a value on a unique treasure, however, 40 is not enough. I'm not sure we can trust this fellow. He didn't become the Stout by ending up on the short end of his deals. He'll pay more. I don't think this is a good idea. If I were him, I'd just steal it. No. We're going to refuse to sell. Mordred tried to argue, but we stood firm in our refusal. So, we have taken some of the Grey Fox's land. This will allow us to... No. We'll have a, sh we'll have a look at... Oh, actually, we can. Hurrah, we can build another temple at last. So, we're going to build... What do we urgently need, actually? Horse friend would preserve the lives of horses. The Roxy Temple would um, warn against chaos incursions. Odelia. We can build another single level one. Earth Lord's quite useful, improves the, um, for defense purposes, but I think we're going to build Lanka My Temple. Huzzah! Right. So if babies were born, we initiated 20 children as adults, 143 more people, 25 more cattle, 7 more horses, 24 fewer sheep. We have produced a heck of a lot of food. We need to start trading some of that away, and we now have a stone wall. Which should help us on the defensive side of things, keeping our people alive. So next time, more King of Dragon Pass. Until then.